Hello, everybody. Welcome in for another episode of All Club Confidential. I'm your host, Austin Price. Hope you had a chance to catch up with Rick Barnes' last visit. He was fantastic. Some great stories by Coach Barnes. Tonight, we have Josiah Jordan-James on the show. But before then, we bring in the Volunteer Club's James Clawson. And James, you're uh, wearing the uh, the new Lays, which were designed by members of the E.L. Maliava family. Yeah. You have gray and orange, orange and white, and then there's a black and orange one as well. So depending on the color yeah. combination of yeah. the uniform, you've got different options. Yeah, and maybe working on a solid orange, too. So, you know, depending on the uniform combination, you could coordinate accordingly. But, uh, yeah, uh, we've got some new gear on our website. We're really excited about a lot of new designs. We have a lot of memorabilia on the website, and obviously the Lays, which were designed by Nico's aunt. So uh, we're really excited about that. When you look at the shape of NIL this offseason, it feels like it's been more wild than ever. What, what's that been like? You know, I mean, you've got the, the, the two-time the – Two-time kids, transfers, two, yeah. Two-time transfers now. So, you know, guys on your, your current roster that you thought were, were good – now may not be good now we're now we're through the january deadline to get into the portal but obviously we'll have to think about the portal in may with some guys that have transferred here once but but could theoretically transfer again so it's just been um not getting too high not getting too low but just kind of you know taking a deep breath and one day at a time and you guys have been working in lockstep with the university and 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 really you know are in a real simpatico right now on just kind of you know the direction of NIL and and make sure you're there for the student athletes on campus. Yeah, we're really yeah we got a great relationship with Tennessee. We have a great relationship with the Vol Network, so we do a lot with them. Um, you know we're we're trying to do our part to educate athletes now. You know coming up on on tax season and and different things like that to help them think about you know financial literacy, you know accounting and different things that you know are practical for for their life and will help them as they say go through school and life that's good i'll send you my taxes to do as well all right you do that <laughs> he's james Claus, and now let's get to tonight's special guest that being josiah jordan james what's up boss what's up my guy how you doing good you good good to see you you too First ever Vol Club Confidential, it was you and Cedric Tillman, and you were more a co-host that night uh, than you were kind of like anything else. I mean, you just kind of, I told you afterwards, I'm like, you could do TV one day, you know, whenever your playing career's done. Um, I wanted to have you back out and kind of do more of a deep dive on you. Um, When last season ended and you went through senior day Mm -hmm. and and all that, and then you left, right? You're gone and you're preparing for the NBA draft. Mm -hmm. Did you think you were done? At, at, At what point did you think... I might actually go back. Well, in my exit interview, like every year we have exit interviews with the coaches, I told them, I was like, yeah, you create the roster however you want. You can get guys in my position, my skills, whatever, Um, because I wanted them to, you know, go forward like I wasn't coming back. And I wanted to be all in within the NBA draft process, and I was. And I really did enjoy it. I spent two months down in Miami with my agency and got to know a lot of guys and got to know a lot about myself and just became invested in in becoming the best version of myself I could possibly be. And I didn't start thinking about the return until, you know, I was was in constant talks with Coach Barnes, just letting him know how everything was going. He would call and check in on me and I'd ask how workouts and and spring training was going. And it wasn't until after our NBA, so I, I was invited to the G League Combine and it was after that where, you know, it was a couple of days you had to make a decision. I think it was the 30th of June I had to make a decision by. I think it was the 25th is the day we got done. And, you know, I told him, you know, I had, had, had gotten really good feedback. And I feel like either decision that I made, it was going to be like it was a win-win situation for me. But I just felt like the way last year ended and I, I was, wasn't able to perform at the level I wanted to just because of injury. Uh, I wanted to, to end it a better way. And, you know, I had guys like Santi and Zakai recruiting me to come back. And, you know, it's, it's hard to say no to, to coming back to Knoxville, Tennessee with, you know, so many great things that it provides. And I ultimately decided to come back and I haven't looked back since. Yeah. You get that New York accent with, with, with Zakai in your ear and you just can't get rid of it. Can't get rid of it. That little guy, I mean, he's – He's had such a big impact on me. Uh, he ha- he has no idea, but he's like my brother. He knows that his family's my family, and vice versa. And uh, 
he was definitely in my ear the entire time. You come back, but you're not on scholarship when you first come back because they've given away too many scholarships. <laughs> yeah. So you're back as a walk-on for a brief moment in time. And then Chris <laughs> Ludlam ends up going and, and going to St. John's, and uh-huh. you're back on scholarship. But how, how different was that? I know, you were never going to be looked at that way, but at the same time, I'm sure you were like, it's kind of different. Mm, for sure. Uh, my hope was to hopefully be the, the best walk-on player in, in college <laughs> basketball. That's what my dream was. Um, but then, you know, things worked out differently. Uh, Chris got to know him really well in, a, in the brief stint that we had together. Um, we still keep in contact to this day, but, you know, I was able to receive my scholarship back. But it it was a different dynamic for sure. The coaches were ragging on me and things, but uh, it was funny for the for the time being. You talk about some of these players making you feel old, giving you a hard time. I mean, football's got that same way. I mean, you, you have Keenan Peely, who literally will be 26 when next year starts. I mean, yeah. you know, he can rent a car. I don't. You're not that old yet. Mm-hmm. You can't rent a car yet. So, just 23. Just 23. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, for the for this roster, you know, you are one of the older guys. You and Santi. Mm-hmm. Do you two ever look around and go, man? Every day, um, you know, because we have. Cam Carr and Freddie, who I think were both born in 2003. And it's like, they think I'm, they ask me all the time about players who are in the NBA, like, did you play against him? This guy, that guy, who, guys who are like six and seven years older than me. I'm like, (laughs) I'm not that old. It's really not that far apart. Um, But, you know, they'll make comments. And, you know, Santi and I would be like, man, you remember when we used to to act like that or, or say things like that? We'll always catch ourselves doing that. But it's, they they keep us young for sure. They tell us how old we are, and I, I I'll admit I have some old habits um, when it comes to you know just everyday life. But my teammates keep me very young and keep me on my toes for sure. How's the body feeling now? I mean, you talked about you know not ending the way you wanted to mm-hmm. end. You were kind of banged up a year ago. How, how different does the body feel? My body feels great. Um, this entire summer and preseason, this was the first. Uh, year where I didn't have any injury I didn't miss a single practice a single workout and you know I'm just grateful to be in this position uh, you know because I've been through so many injuries since my time here I think it's just a full circle moment Uh, I think I have to you know credits give a lot of credit when credit is due to G and Chad um, and you know other personnel that you know have have gotten me through injuries and surgeries that I've been through but I feel like it's all taught me uh, about being a pro every injury every setback that I've had has prepared me for this season and the season that I've been able to have uh, a healthy season. I pray that you know I keep keep it this way and I don't miss any games, any practices. But you know I think that during the time when I was injured and going through things, it was tough. But there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. I think that I've reached it. When you look at this team, you go back Dalton two or three games against Ole Miss. I think what do you have eight? You mm-hmm. know, it's like three or six from the floor, like. You know, everybody's like, oh, he's you know in a little bit of a you know a slump. And then he, the last two games he goes just bananas, right? Mm-hmm. Both on the road. Yeah. Um, you know, there have been times where Santi does that, you do that, mm-hmm. where you kind of hit that little lull. For for a guy like Dalton, who again is playing at this level for the first time, how much do as, as older guys have to step in and say, it's okay, this is going to happen. That's why we're here to pick you up. Jonas comes up with a huge game and that Ole Miss game and 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 you know other players as well. I mean, we really don't overreact to to bad games because i mean you play bad for 40 minutes and it it is what it is but you gotta wash it you gotta wash it out and the one thing i love about you know basketball is we play two games a week and so right after you're done with one game you're on to the next one and every uh, every game has a different set of challenges but we really don't overreact because we know the work that we put in we know you know how we're built as a team, as a unit, and ad, as individuals that will bounce back. And we know that when everybody's clicking uh, at the right time, we don't need to peak too early. Uh, we never want to peak too soon, but we have to be playing our best basketball at the right time, which is at the end of the year. You look at a guy like Freddie, he comes here. When he gets here, I mean, like, Dalton's not here. Yeah. You're leaving. Santi's leaving. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden he looks up and all these guys are here and, and kind of in front of him. Um how much do you have to look back on your time and, and, and remind him, like, hey, like I was at this point when I was a freshman too. Like, yeah. You know, it, it doesn't – I know everybody wants to play right away, but sometimes you just got to kind of be patient. For sure. Because he's starting to see a little bit more playing time. 100%. And he's, he's proven it in practice. You know, going against Zakai, going against Jamai and JG and Santi at the guard position every day, uh, it's, it's been tough for him. But it's, it's also prepared him. And he's starting to become into his own, um, being a better – playmaker a better all-around player and he knows that and he's taking it upon himself just to you know be a sponge you know 
it's not often you get too many guys with so much experience ahead of you that you know you could because as, as freshmen as highly talented how to touted and recruited as he was you know you want to come in and play right away but he's been great at just absorbing as as much information from the players and coaches as possible and that's why I think you know it's been stepping stones for him and he's been able to see more minutes on the court now when you look at you know the the totality of your career what are you most proud of I'm really just proud of the way I've persevered um, because there's so many things that I've had to battle through and I haven't done it alone I give credit when credit is due to my family um, to my support system my teammates and coaches and everybody involved in Tennessee athletics but I just feel like my story is a story of resiliency um, you know you come in as a five-star recruit having all these expectations that I put on myself, not even the outside expectations, but, you know, not really living up and playing the way I wanted to. And, you know, just grinding every year, year after year after year, whether I'm injured or playing, just being a great teammate and a great leader um, to get me to where I am today. So I just think my story is a story of resiliency and I'm, I'm proud of myself for, for sticking it through because I know in today's day and age, uh, a lot of people would have quit. A lot of people would have gone elsewhere. But, you know, my mom always told me if you start something, you, you better finish it. And I'm, I'm hoping I can finish this the right way. I'm with you there. Like, I, I look at uh, Jabari Small on the football team. That's my guy. And I have so much respect for, you know, he's going to go take a shot being mm-hmm. in the pros. He could have came back for another year here. Yeah. Um, you know, he could also have went somewhere else and played. But I don't think he really wanted to go anywhere else mm-hmm. and play. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. And I got a lot of respect for that. Like, there are other guys that, you know, took their one year and, and chased, you know, some NIL or yeah. whatever, and, 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 and Jabari didn't do that. And I I, I just think there's uh, there's something to be said for the legacy, right? You know, come and be able to come back in 20 years and 15 years, even in five years, mm-hmm. and, you know, people look at you a certain way. And, and, and let's face it, I mean, no matter where you go, whether it's – Ole Miss, Tennessee, Alabama, Washington, or North Arizona. Like, I mean, like being an alum of a school, you're allowed, you, there's a certain level of, uh, you know, impact that outsiders can have, you know, once you get into the business world, yeah. just being able to network. Definitely. And like I said, Tennessee, there's so many connections that I've made and relationships that I've made since being here. I feel like whatever I'll need down the road that the University of Tennessee has put me in a place where I, I know who to call, I have somebody to call. Uh, no matter what I'll need. We go back to, you know, when players are in slumps. Do you ever know, like, I mean, I know you go into every game and want to play your best, but Mm -hmm. do you ever know, like, okay, tonight is an off night for this person. I've got to be a little more offensive-minded or I have to be a little more, you know, Mm -hmm. rebounding-minded depending on foul trouble, depending on who's not making shots, that type of thing. How much do you have to kind of balance that on a nightly basis? Yeah, I mean, I feel like you get a good feel – by the time halftime comes around, the first 20 minutes, you see how the other team's playing. You see how you guys are playing as individuals. And, you know, sometimes you have to pick up the slack for other people. Um, and, you know, it might be me that people have to pick up the slack for. But that's just the biggest thing with us, just trying to be consistent on a daily basis, which is really hard. Uh, it's hard to play your best basketball every time you step out on the court. But, you know, we, we train and we work so hard in practice to do that. And I think that's why we become such a really good uh, program that we have favorite spot on the floor to shoot from favorite spot on the floor to shoot from is any spot that Zakai Ziegler passing me the ball because he loves like I'm gonna get him his assist he wants those double doubles he's so good at drawing and penetrating the defense and drawing two or three defenders at times and I know I'm gonna get open and I just got to be able to knock it down I'm gonna shoot it every time I thought you were gonna say the elbow I, I think I feel like you work the elbows really well. I do I love when teams go zone against us because I can get into the the cracks and crevices in the middle the mid-range game is I, I is a lost art form it is um but coach you know we we practice that a lot you know and vitamins which are just you know daily workouts that we do with coaches and managers well I, I get my shots up for sure but the mid-range I, I definitely hold my hard hat there favorite spot to shoot threes from either one of the corners like I said because it's always Zakai or DK or Santi coming downhill and a driving kick is is you can't beat that so you like the corners mm-hmm. not the wings not the wings and Zakai is actually the exact opposite he hates the corners he would prefer to shoot from half court if he could then the corner yeah <laughs> so who's the one guy on this team that's that you feel like he's not played his best basketball in this year i don't mm-hmm. mean for his career this year that you're like 
will be the guy that could potentially take y'all over the top. Not named Josiah Jordan James. I believe it could be Tobey Walker. Oh man, Fozzie Bear baby. <laughs> Tobey, he's just he is he's special. He's a star in his role, and he's learning. He's growing. He's only a sophomore, and he's just somebody who wants to be great. He's so coachable, um, and he wants to be great so badly that I know he will, and I know. When the going gets tough, you get Tobey in the game. You're going to get toughness. You're going to get rebounding. And you, you win a lot of games with those two attributes. And he hangs his hat on, on, on those two things right there. And he hasn't played his best. He knows that. But he's definitely coming to his own. And I'm really happy with where he's at. And I know he's going to be a force to reckon with as a SEC plays continues. And he just seems like a Rick Barnes type player. 100%. Like I said, he's so coachable. And you know how Coach Barnes can coach, which, you know, we, we all knew what we were getting ourselves into when we committed here. But Coach Barnes is on him as much as anybody in Tobey. He, he takes it. He, he listens to what is being said and not how it's being said. And he learns from it. And he, he's growing daily. And I can see it. And I know for a fact that – we're going to win a lot of basketball games because of him. Give me one younger player who's not playing right now mm -hmm. that's not named Freddie DeLeon because it's easy I can't to name say him. all of them? Nope. Okay. I need you to give me one okay. that, that you think is when you're when you're gone, when your career's over and you're wherever you're playing next year, the NBA, wherever, you look up, you're going to be like, I knew that guy was going to be good. Cam Carr. And I actually – Cam – I hate to throw him under the bus, but he was having a tough practice. The last practice, and Coach was, we call it cooking and cooking in his kitchen. Uh, Coach was, he was he was doing his deal, and Cam wasn't have a great, having a great practice. I went over to him. I was like, Cam, you have the brightest future out of everybody here. Do not let missed shots or bad turnovers or anything deter you from being you because you are an outstanding scorer. You have so much length. You can be a great defender. And I literally told him he has the most potential out of all of us. And not to get sidetracked with one bad day, one bad practice, and that, you know, he just has to, to keep his head high and, and get to work. And I know that he loves working, working out, and he wants to be the best version of, of himself that he can be. And so that's why I say him. How hard, how hard is that, though? I mean, like, you know, I mean, when, 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 when things are down, it's yeah. easy just to stay down. For sure. It's very tough. But that's where I give a lot of credit to the 15 guys that we have on the team because we're always concerned about the next individual somebody's having a bad day we got five six guys going over to pick them up letting them know that you know we got your back don't worry about it we hear coach we we know you're not playing your best basketball right now but we got your back we know what you can bring to the table we just we need to see it on a daily basis and that's what I love so much about this group and really all the groups that we've had we've just had such close camaraderie that there's nothing that can really separate us. Best part of Knoxville that you that you just kind of stumbled upon, right? Like you you you've, you've been here so long right. that you had to have stumbled upon to something where you're like, man, I didn't know this was here. Uh huh. And and I think this is really cool. I love real hot yoga. Over about five minutes that way. Yeah. MC, our director of basketball operations, got me hooked on it. Mary Carter. Mary Carter. She's the GOAT, she's the biggest star in her role. She, like, there would be no Tennessee basketball without her. But Real Hot Yoga is, is such a great community. And I, like I said, I, I've done yoga before, but the hot yoga takes it to a whole nother level. And I've met great people, um, great teachers and mentors. And it's just a place for me to go and get a nice sweat, a really good sweat. You're gonna, you're gonna sweat a lot, but just to relax and, you know, take my, take my mind off of things. When you're Playing career is done here. Mm -hmm. What do you? How would how would you like to be to describe? Like, if you had, if you had like a, I don't want to say a headstone because mm -hmm. you're not dying, but at the same time, if if you had a plaque on campus that described you, your career, what do you want people to say about you? Obviously, I wanted I would like for people to say I was a, a pretty decent basketball player, but more than anything, I just want people to to say that he cared about others more than he cared about himself like he was as selfless as they come and I think that if that's said about me then I'll be I'll sleep great at night and I'll be a happy camper best part of campus is what game days football game days I love basketball game days I'm very biased when it comes to that but nothing beats a hundred however many thousand people in Neyland Stadium 
um, because our fans are the best. Our football team is is outstanding. I love what they have going on over there. They got great individuals, but nothing beats a game day on Saturday. What will you miss most? Game day on Saturday. Um, How about game day on Saturday. Oh, okay. I'll miss the tailgating. Um, I'll miss the the fans that I get to see. People coming up and interacting with us, whether it be little kids or grandparents, um, and everybody in between. Just the the ability to to interact with them has been second to none because we we work so hard and they appreciate the hard work. We're we're a really tough, hard playing team and they realize that and and they love us for it. They love us when we're losing. They love us when we're winning. And Vol Nation is second to none because of it. See, I got like Jacob Warren. He came back mm-hmm. kind of like you. Yeah. Um. You know, and uh, say so I'm you know I remember him saying I'm not an emotional guy. And then he comes up to me on senior day out on the field, and he's just bawling. And I said, I didn't think you were an emotional guy. And he goes, I wasn't. It just hit me. Yeah. Like, do you think it'll hit you? Because, I mean, like, last year there was still the – even when exactly, you went through senior day, yeah. you knew there was a chance was you might come back. Chance, There's no sure. chance. You're getting kicked out regardless <laughs> in a couple I'm months. I'm evicted. Uh, that senior day, uh, I didn't cry last year. Roche was the only guy who cried, and we, we gave him crap about it. We still do to this day. But – I don't know. I, I could see myself getting very emotional just knowing that it really is the last time I'll be playing in TBA. And that's why I think throughout this, you know, this entire year that I've just tried to be present and be all in with my relationships and just becoming the best version of myself on the basketball court and off the court and just trying to soak it all in because I know that there's, there's no coming back next year. Have you ever went overseas with Santi when he goes? I haven't. We did go to Italy, though, as a team. Sure, yes. Yeah, but but no, I mean, I, I didn't know if no. just the two of you. Mm-mm, I haven't. Haven't been invited yet. I think those trips are just for him and Maria. Santi. <laughs> He's special. We'll just, we'll just say that. <laughs> so he ta- what's he taught you? Oh, man. Santi is by far the greatest basketball mind I've ever been around. I've never, like even Coach says it on a daily basis like that. Really smart idea, Santi. Yeah, we, we should implement that. Um, but yeah, he's taught me so much on the court, just the way he sees the game, both offensively and defensively. But Santi is somebody who he's shown me that I'm more than just a basketball player because Santi sees himself sees himself as more than just a basketball player. He's somebody who loves golf. He's a great boyfriend, soon to be great husband. No pressure, Santi. Um, but he he's somebody who's just very very present in his relationships with people and that's why i feel like people are drawn to santi and that's why i love santi but he's just been like a great great brother to me i can't wait to have him in my wedding uh whenever that day comes you engaged i'm not okay, I'm yeah. not nowhere near it what about extracurriculars like i mean like what do you what do you got i mean he's got golf what do you have reading i've started to read now i was actually reading a book called the silent patient before i decided to come over here and talk to you um, but yeah, I, I'm a big Colleen Hoover fan. Um, she writes a lot of romance novels. I've she's probably written about 15 to 20 books. I want to say I've read about nine or 10 of them. But I'm trying to expand my horizon. I just finished another book, uh, a series in A Court of Thorns and Roses. It was the second book. It was A Court of Mist and Fury. Um, and so I'm trying to expand my horizon. But reading has been something that. Is new to me, but that I've started to, to like and enjoy. Go to soft drink. Ginger ale, specifically Verner's. Mm-hmm. Why? My da- Why? My dad's always loved them, um, and ginger ale is just like good for the soul. It calms your tummy down when you're, you know, you got a little tummy ache, and I just feel like it's soothing. Oh, he said tummy. <laughs> I'm still young. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> But you're not. I'm not. I'm really not. <laughs> when you turn 24, September 5th. Okay, so you're not that man. I'm like, not. I mean, think about it. Peely is 26. I did not know that. That was news to me. And he's married. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and he's been married for a few years now. That's big time. It 26 is. 26 is. Woo. I, I don't want to know how my body's going to feel at 26. And he plays football. Jeez. We should get Peely to start marriage counseling for Santi. <laughs> he's going to need it soon. No pressure, Santi. <laughs> <laughs> has he proposed he hasn't he hasn't and i don't know when that day will come but i think it'll be soon no pressure santi <laughs> it's like you, i think you know something <laughs> maria watch out 
Uh, they're a great couple, though. They're they're perfect for Where's each she other. Is she from here? She's. I want to say she's from Ohio. Ohio. Because I, I think he went up there for Christmas with their family, with her family. Gotcha. So we what we learned before we start taping was you don't like the cold. You don't no. like snow. No, at all. What's up with that? I mean, what good comes with being cold? Nothing. And the snow is overrated. It's cool to build a snowman and have a snowball fight. It's cool for a few days, right? A few minutes. Like 30 few minutes min- tops. <laughs> <laughs> it tops. Do you wish you had black uniforms? I 100% do. We've talked to MC about it, and I don't know. She comes up. And like I said, love My daughter MC. brought this up the other day. She's like, you know, Daddy, the, how the women have the blue uniforms? Like they the, have it all. The men need black uniforms. We do, and I feel like we would go undefeated with those, but... And my thing is, as soon as I leave, I feel like next year they're going to get black uniforms. And it's it's inevitable at this point, and I'll just have to live with it. But I would have loved to have black uniforms. What you should do is when they give you a framed jersey, Mm -hmm. since you already got one from last year, you should ask for a black one. Let's go ahead and unveil it this year, and you get one. I might have to do that. You need to propose this. Yeah. MC, (laughs) MC will listen to this, so when you're listening to this, I'll take the black jersey with all the rest of my jerseys. Mary Carter, when she used to work in sports information... She would give out the credentials, mm-hmm. and then at the end of practice, I just got tired of keeping up with mine in between practice, so I would just give it back to her. Right. And so she would always just give it back to me. Mm-hmm. Mary Carter is the best. She is, by far. She is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. There will be – there's only one MC. What's the one place in Knoxville you'll miss the most? Can I say TBA? No, no, I mean like – Food places, uh, oh. places off campus. I, we talked about it last time. Little Tokyo, the hibachi spot down oh, Chapman, Chapman Highway. Highway. Oh my goodness! They know my order, like through and through. I love the people over there. They love me, but I will definitely. You didn't get miss. an NIL deal off the last time. I didn't. Sadly, I didn't. But come on, I don't, I don't Tokyo. need it. It's okay. I I'm just a happy customer every time I go there. So they take care of me. I I mean, I enjoy my food, but Little Tokyo is one spot that I wish I could take with me everywhere. Favorite non-basketball Tennessee athlete. That's a that in on the male side, then we'll do the female. Okay. Okay. We talked about him earlier. I would have to say Jabari Small. We got to know each other through Vol Leaders and then a trip that we took over to where did we go rwanda yeah africa yeah so we got really close and we knew each other through kennedy um and i had met him a couple of times but it wasn't until we got to africa me him and big o um really got really close on that trip and i they text me constantly before and after games and what when their season was going on i would always text them and keep up keep up to date with them yeah both both those kids man really good kids solid like very very solid. come from good families for sure just like yourself so i mean i appreciate that you know, your mom, she runs the show, buddy. My mom, I think my mom will be missed. She's, she's going to cry. I think she people, cried last year. No, she, uh, I don't know. She's kind of, but emotional. it's over this year. Though. Yeah. She'll definitely cry this year. But the, the people who work the game, she, I think I get my, my selflessness from her because she just loves taking care of people. She'll bring the security people drinks and, and food before and after games. And she does a great job of taking care of them. Um, but they always ask me, like, when I'm going there for a women's game or I'm going to a football game, how's your mom doing? They won't even say hello to me. They're <laughs> like, can you tell your mom we said hello? Um, and so I think that she will be missed more than I will. Yeah, that's like my dad. You know, never met a stranger. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> impact. impact. It leaves an impact I no matter where he goes. You. Favorite Lady Vol. Non, I'm going to say non-Lady Vol basketball. Too. Oh. You gotta, this has got to be This has got to be an alternate sport. Okay. Or if you want to give two, you can give okay. one Lady Vol basketball and then one alternate sport. I love Tess Darby. Okay. Tess is the best. Uh, I need some shooting pointers from her right about now. But non-Lady Vol basketball would have to be Morgan Fingal. I also got to know her through Vol Leaders as well. But she is... Which a, is a good little program for for you all to get to know people in other sports 100%. too. 100%. Uh, you get to know... Uh, student athletes from every sport that we have here on campus and it's you get to learn about leadership you learn so much about yourself and others and you just create a bond through that and then you get to take a nice little trip at the end and do service work like I said we got to go to Africa I'm pretty sure this year's cohort is going back to Africa but a different part 
Um, but yeah, it, Vault Leaders is it, it changed my life for the better for sure. But Morgan Fingal is the true definition of a lady VFL, and I'm so happy for her and the season that they were able to have. But she is also one of a kind. One thing most people don't know about you. One thing that people don't know about me, I feel like I'm very simple. My life is very boring, and I like it that way. I feel like as a student athlete, we kind of get a rap of, I don't know. I just, I like things being boring. I play basketball, play video games, do yoga, read, and that's about it. I don't have any cats anymore. They're back in Charleston. Um, so I spend my free time just reading and playing video games. Which ones? Right now, Jamai, Jonas, Freddie, and Jordan Ganey and I are playing Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3. Not Warzone, just the multiplayer. Um, and so we we spend a little too much time playing that, but it's been great for us. So that's why you lost to Mississippi State a week or two ago? 100%. Way to go. We can blame it on the Call of Duty servers. Won't happen again, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> so what's the one game you got coming up on the schedule? Uh, and don't give me the coach answer of the next game. Uh, <laughs> I actually wasn't going to say that. But, like, like whether it's home or road, right. that you, like, I can't wait for that game. Not that not that it's like, you know, you're, you're saying you're going to beat the team or whatever, that mm-hmm. you just can't wait to play against that team in that environment. The last game of the season, at home, senior night against Kentucky. Be can't wild wait. in there. Cannot wait. It was already going to be sold out regardless of if it was senior night or not, but – I mean, now we, we can't lose. Like, it's the last time we're going to get to play in TBA. And so we got to go out with a bang. And what other way to, to end it than with the Wildcats coming to town? How much how much fun is that game? Both up there and down Man, here. It's, it's always a blast. And w- I would say, obviously, winning the SEC tournament my junior year was has been the best game so far. But there was a game we played, and we, it was my freshman year. Santi was the only one who's still on the team now, but we were down by. You like, don't say. <laughs> we were and this one. This one, Folky had hair. He had the Folky flow going, um, <laughs> but we were down by like seventeen with maybe like six or seven minutes left. They were a top five team in the country, headed the SEC, and we came back and we beat them. They had Tyrese Maxey, who plays for the Philadelphia 76ers, Emmanuel Quickly who's also in the NBA, um, Nick Richards. They had a squad, and they were obviously the better team. But we came back, we spoiled their night, and that's like I, I have dreams about that game to this day. Like that was, like I said, the SEC championship, obviously number one, but that's 1A or 1B. Well, man, we appreciate you coming in. And uh, just a uh, a neat uh, treat as uh, your time winds down here, and I know you are going to soak up the last couple of months For of this sure. and uh, enjoy all those road games hostile road environments yeah. enjoy those home games and then tournament time come march yes sir i appreciate you i'm gonna miss you too but while i have while i'm still here i'm still gonna enjoy you <laughs> he is josiah jordan james he is a special special basketball player for tennessee we'll be back next week with another episode of vault club confidential